Shakuntala Devi began in 1934 in Bangalore, India, where a five-year-old girl named Shakuntala Devi lives. She seemed engrossed in playing like a child of her age, with her cousin accompanying her while doing his school math homework. But without realizing it, Shakuntala saw the math problems, and to his surprise, she could solve them correctly in her head, even though they were problems with the cube root of an eight-digit number. Realizing that Shakuntala was no ordinary child, her cousin brought her to her parents and enthusiastically explained her genius to them. How can she not? She is only five years old and has never been to school, but she can solve complex math problems, and she did it in her head. After seeing firsthand Shakuntala's talent, her father, Vishal, decided to take her to schools where she showed her skills in front of teachers and students. He uses her talent to create a kind of math show, where Shakuntala solves the teacher's complex problems, and every show always ends in success. Shakuntala got a standing ovation from the audience, while Bishaw got the money. However, when she saw other children studying and playing together at school, Shakuntala had the desire to attend school, and so she conveyed her wish to her father. But unfortunately, Bishaw refuses to enroll her in school, arguing that she is already smart even without having to go to school. One afternoon, Shakuntala's mother asked her to study because she had to do math shows in 10 different places next week. But at this point, Shakuntala started to rebel. She refuses to study, which irritates her mother. She even threatened that if Shakuntala continued to refuse to study, Bissau would get angry. But Shakuntala still refused and instead said that she should be the father in their house because, after all, she was the one who made a living, not Bishaw. Hearing that, her mother only responded by saying that Shakuntala would feel how difficult it would be to raise a child in the future. After saying that, she entered the house without telling her to study again. Shakuntala's older sister, Sarada, just stood there watching the argument between Shakuntala and their mother. But when their mother left, she told Shakuntala that she was amazed by her genius. She even believed that one day Shakuntala would become a great person. Shakuntala herself hoped that would happen. She promises Sarada if she really succeeds in the future, she will take her wherever she wants. But that would never happen because one night, when Shakuntala came home from her show, she found Sarada lying dead in front of the house. Sarada had been sick for a long time, but their family didn't have the money to take her to the hospital. Shakuntala's money was only enough to meet the family's daily needs. Shakuntala, however, was too angry to remember that. She blames her parents for Sarada's death, especially her mother who did nothing to save Sarada. For Shakuntala, a mother should do anything for her child. Disappointed, Shakuntala refused to talk to her mother again. She hated her so much that she swore to Sarada that she would not become a woman like their mother in the future. In 1954, when Shakuntala was 25 years old, Bishaw was still unemployed and only relied on the income Shakuntala earned from doing math shows. But the older she gets, the better she gets at doing her shows. Shakuntala has a boyfriend, Direj, who never wants to propose to her. He always made various excuses to delay proposing to her, and she never questioned his excuse. One night, Shakuntala finds Direj wedding invitation to another woman. It turns out he already has a future wife and has only pretended to love Shakuntala all this time. Of course, she was furious when she found that out, so she shot him with an air gun. Therefore, to forget about Direj, Shakuntala went to London at the age of 26, where she later lived in a guest house. There, she still offered to do math shows to some important people because she needed money to pay rent and daily necessities. But unfortunately, she has difficulty finding people who want to use her services. One day, Shakuntala finally found the right place to do her show, namely the Royal Mathematical Society in London. And so, she solved complex problems in front of the intellectuals at the venue, and what impressed them even more, she did it in such a short time. One of the people amazed by her was Javier, a mathematician from Spain. He even approached Shakuntala and asked her to get acquainted with him. After that, it didn't take long for the two to start a relationship. Long story short, Shakuntala's relationship with Javier had a positive impact. He helps her improve her English skills and gets shown in schools to officials in London. And wherever she did a math show, she always did it successfully. She can earn a lot of money from her shows, making her landlady proud of her. But then, the smile on Shakuntala's face disappeared after she got a letter from her parents asking her to send them money for their living expenses in India. No doubt, just reading the letter made her angry. She felt her parents treated her like a bank and had always been that way since the beginning. They didn't even ask how she was in the letter, and all they care about is money. Still, she replied to their letter and promised to send them monthly money. One day, Shakuntala is invited to appear on a television show, where she will compete with the fastest computer to solve math problems. She could solve the problems easily at first until, at some point, she got a question that she thought contained an error in the last three digits. But the host ignored her protest, making her unable to solve the problem until time ran out. 
He even said someone from the land of elephants and snakes couldn't be the next Einstein. And he still refused when Shakuntala tried to revise the problematic question, much to her embarrassment. The event was broadcast live throughout the country, after all. The next day, Javier came to see Shakuntala with good news. The experts had manually calculated yesterday's math problem, and they found that she was right. The computer had made a mistake. Thanks to that, Shakuntala is now dubbed a human computer. Since then, Shakuntala has been increasingly passionate about doing math shows. She was invited to perform in other countries, making her more famous and increasing her wealth. But as a consequence, Javier feels inferior in the face of Shakuntala's success. So he broke up with her, arguing that he should return to Spain. In 1968 in Bombay, India, Shakuntala finally met a new man, Paratash Barnaji, and they quickly fell in love. Thus, as they intended to get married, the two went to Shakuntala's hometown to seek her parents' blessing. But Shakuntala realized that she still hated them. Her hatred for them is even greater than her affection, resulting in her refusing to come out of the car and meet them with Paratash. As a result, Paratash ends up proposing to Shakuntala in the car. They later married without telling Shakuntala's parents, let alone inviting them. In 1970, Shakuntala and Paratash were blessed with a baby girl named Anupama, or Anu for short. Now, Shakuntala devotes her life to being both a mother and a wife, and she is happy with it. One day, when Shakuntala was cleaning the house, she found a black album containing her memories of mathematics. She realized she missed the times when she did her shows, so she decided to tell Paratash that she wanted to continue her career. Fortunately, he is an understanding husband. He allowed her to do whatever she wanted, as long as it made her happy. A few days later, Shakuntala left the house to return to the show, leaving Anu and Paratash home. Shakuntala still has not lost her touch. She was able to impress many people with her talent and even got into the Guinness Book of Records. Between her shows, she always takes the time to call home to tell Paratash all about her experiences. But one day, Shakuntala gets worried after Paratash tells her that Anu has started learning to talk. It was because the first word Anu said was father instead of mother. It made sense, actually, since Anu was spending more time with Paratash. But still, it made Shakuntala jealous, and more importantly, she was worried that she had not been a good mother to her daughter. She was afraid that Anu would forget her. For that reason, Shakuntala quickly returned home, asking Paratash and Anu to accompany her to work and travel worldwide. But of course, Paratash didn't want to because he had a job in India. Moreover, his pride would be at stake if he depended on his wife for money. Ultimately, they chose to divorce, and Shakuntala took Anu with her to travel around the world doing math shows, much to Paratash's grief. In 1978, Anu was eight years old and really missed her father. She could never see her father again because Shakuntala always brought her around the world. All she could do was write Paratash letters and then ask her mother to send them. On the other hand, Shakuntala, who has now become astrological alongside a mathematician, realizes that Anu misses Paratash. Still, she couldn't let Anu live with her father because, after all, she loved her and wanted her to always be by her side. Anu, however, didn't just want to meet her father. She wants to go to school like other children her age. So far, she has only been able to do homeschooling thanks to Shakuntala, who always takes her around the world. But she was tired of it. She wants to be a normal child and attend a normal school. And her wish was in sync with Paratash. When he finally meets Shakuntala, Paratash demands that she send Anu to school immediately. Otherwise, he would file a custody case, and he was sure he would win it. In 1986, a teenage Anu could finally attend a boarding school and made many friends there. But even so, Shakuntala never changed. She always invites Anu to accompany her on traveling worldwide whenever she gets the chance. Anu herself rarely enjoys time when she attends her mother's events. Even at one time, when Shakuntala held a question and answer session about her book with a homosexual theme, Anu looked very bored but her boredom soon turns to anger when her mother slanders Paratash as gay. At this point, Anu had reached the limit of her patience. She lashed out at Shakuntala not only because her mother slandered her father but also because she built her career at the expense of Anu's childhood. Anu was tired of constantly moving from hotel to hotel because her mother wanted Anu to accompany her. She never felt she had a place worthy of home, just as she never felt she had a mother. So, if Shakuntala had no intention of being a normal mother, Anu threatened that she would run away from her and live with her father. In response, Shakuntala tells her that Paratash doesn't want Anu to live with him, but she promised to take some time off and live with her in London. In 1987, Shakuntala presented Anu with a house in the heart of London, much to Anu's delight. She promised to spend time every week with Anu, and Anu can invite Paratash to her new house whenever she wants. Shakuntala did not just give empty promises. She now spends more time with Anu, from cycling to cooking together allowing her daughter to enjoy life more than ever. 
She even helped Anu to start her property business. But their relationship soured again in 1997. At that time, Anu, 27 years old, met Ajay Kumar, a businessman who would become her future husband. And sure enough, it didn't take long before they fell in love. When Ajay has proposed to Anu, and the two families have agreed to set a wedding date, he gets into a dispute with Shakuntala. Shakuntala wants Ajay and Anu to stay in London after getting married so that it will be easier for Anu to accompany her whenever she travels the world. But of course, Ajay couldn't agree with Shakuntala's expectations. He has a life in Bengaluru, India, and he wants Anu to live there with him. Their debate ended without a resolution because they were both adamant. Ajay thinks Anu should come with him because he is her husband, while Shakuntala feels she has more right to decide Anu's life because she is the one who gave birth to her. Their bickering finally reached the ears of Anu, who was furious with her mother. She accuses Shakuntala of hindering her from living her own life. Even if Shakuntala was the woman who gave birth to her, she shouldn't feel she has the right to control Anu's life, especially now that Anu is an adult. Angry at Anu's words, Shakuntala almost slapped her daughter, making Anu even more disappointed in her. In the end, Anu decides to go and marry Ajay without Shakuntala's blessing. Not wanting Anu to leave her, Shakuntala finally took the last option. She threatened that she would shut down Anu's property business in London and freeze all the money in her savings. But instead of yielding to her threat, Anu threatened her back, saying that Shakuntala had separated her from her father. Now, Anu would not let her mother separate her from her husband. If Shakuntala wants to destroy her business, so be it. She can start her business again from scratch in India. A few days later, Anu married Ajay, and they bought a new home in India. But her hatred for Shakuntala is still alive. Anu even got angry when someone brought up Shakuntala in front of her. Not only that, but she also plans not to have children for fear of repeating Shakuntala's mistakes. But fate said otherwise. Anu ended up getting pregnant. Fortunately, over time she came to terms with it. She even realized that having children made her happy. All she had to do was try not to be a mother like Shakuntala. On the other hand, Shakuntala couldn't focus after her fight with her daughter. Even on one occasion, she made a mistake in a live broadcast on television. It made her realize that she had to go to her parents' house and apologize to them. But unfortunately, when she got there, Shakuntala found that her parents had died, and the house she lived in as a child was almost empty. Among the remaining items are news clippings about her success as a mathematician, indicating that her parents have followed her progress since her departure from home. Seeing that, Shakuntala cries, realizing that she had wronged her parents. Meanwhile, Anu has given birth to her child, Amrita, and she successfully runs her property business. One day, Anu meets her old school friends, and their conversation somehow leads to the affection between mothers and children. The conversation seemed to remind her of Amrita, who she left at home, and so she rushed back to the house to accompany her daughter. Later that night, Anu has a serious conversation with Ajay about Shakuntala. She claims that she has forgiven her mother and even regrets that she has been ignoring her calls for the past few years. She plans to call Shakuntala soon, intending to tell her about Amrita. But her intention to reconcile with Shakuntala instantly vanishes after Ajay informs her that Shakuntala has sold all of Anu's property business. As if that wasn't enough, she didn't give Anu a single percent of the profit sharing. Instead, she passed the payment of the capital gains tax onto Anu, which will automatically put Anu's family in debt. Anu and Ajay would not be willing to let Shakuntala do this to them, so they decided to go to London and take legal action against Shakuntala. After all, Ajay was sure they would win their case. But to their surprise, when Anu and Ajay arrived in London, they found it all a trick of Shakuntala. She was forced to do all that because she wanted to meet Anu, who always refused to go to London to see her. She will even give Anu all the profits from selling her properties and won't mind if Anu wants to sue her. Shakuntala doesn't want Anu to be like her, who spent most of her life hating her parents. She wants Anu to really forgive her for all the wrong she did to her. Anu was in shock when she heard all that. She needed time to process everything, so she asked everyone in the room to leave her alone. While thinking alone, Anu found the black album she had always hated. But when she opened it, she found that the album only contained memorable photos of Anu and Shakuntala from their time traveling around the world. She then calls Ajay and enthusiastically tells him about the photos. But without her knowing, Shakuntala saw Anu's enthusiasm. At this moment, Anu finally forgave her mother and apologized to Shakuntala for ignoring her for the past few years. Finally, the mother and daughter embraced each other, enjoying their reunion after so many years apart. At the end of the film, Anu, Ajay, and Amrita are seen attending the show of Shakuntala, whose math skills have improved again after making peace with her daughter. She even got the title of the first human computer in the world, making Anu proud to have a mother like her. The moral that can be learned from this movie is, our children don't really belong to us. 
They have their own life, and they are the ones who can choose their life's path, not their parents.